حضرت امیر المومنین حضرت خلیفت المسیح الخامس جلسہ سلانہ برطانیہ خلافت کیا ہے ایک فضل عظیم رب رحمہ ہے For many of us, the International Annual Convention, or Jalsa Salana in UK, is a culmination of the best of the year, a spiritually uplifting and emotional experience. The reason for it all? The presence of Hazrat Khalifa al Masih. For us, the Jalsa ends there, and we wait for the next year. For Hazrat Khalifa al Masih, it's only a drop in the ocean compared to his countless activities during the year. Join us for the next hour while we take you on a journey with Hazrat Khalifa al Masih as we rewind one year back and provide you with just a small glimpse into just some of the activities of Hazrat Khalifa al Masih and relive those divine moments. After the memorable and blessed days of the International Annual Convention of last year, Hazrat Khalifa al Masih embarked on an incredible journey across the Far East of the world. This was to be Hazu's second visit to the region. Previously, Hazu was here in 2006, his first stop, Singapore. What made his trip to Singapore even more spiritual than it would be was the fact that the Ahmadiyya Muslim communities in Malaysia and Indonesia have been violently persecuted for the past few years. Even the national authorities have given in to some demands of anti ahmadi religious extremists and many activities of the community have been banned. Hazu coming to Singapore enabled these brave souls to see their Khalifa in person, rejuvenating their hopes and healing spiritual wounds. This meant that in over a week, Hazu spent a large portion of his time personally meeting more than 6,000 people from over 20 countries in the region who had come to meet their Khalifa. This love between the Khalifa and his beloved people was apparent in the emotional Friday sermon delivered by Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih at Masjid Taha. Our opponents don't know that the Islam Hazur also held a bath or initiation ceremony for those who had just joined the Ahmadiyam community. To mark Hazur's visit, a special reception was held in the heart of Singapore, which was attended by leading public figures, government officials, foreign ambassadors, and leading statesmen. Prior to the reception, Hazur was interviewed by members of the Indonesian press. In his keynote address, Hazur explained the basis for a just economy, the need for equity between nations, the misrepresentation of Islam, and his concerns of an increasing risk of a third world war. In the world, the people say what well, Islam is connected with violence. I think that's very wrong. So I'm very glad that the movement like yours will do something to correct this image that Islam means peace and harmony with other religion. Islam teaches that all of these resources are the combined property and wealth of all mankind. Thus, all of these blessings are for all people, and so they should all derive benefit from them. Tonight, I begin to listen to the real words of Islam, that is tolerance. I really thank, thank God for this, this wonderful man of God, um, that he had the vision to, to, to really um, speak about peace for the world. And that is really the message that really, really touched my heart. Before he departed from Singapore, many members of the Indonesian press had the opportunity to speak to Hazur in light of the beliefs of the community and the wave of persecution in Indonesia. This question was also asked to the Holy Prophet and it is mentioned in the Quran and Kufar says you just your vision and then we shall accept Eh? Some of your views. We have, I should, if, if we believe that it is from Allah, 
then why should we change? 125 years ago, it was only one man. Eh? And now when he died, he was almost half billion. And now every year we are getting more than half billion people joining Ahmadiyya. And now we are more than 100 million or 150 million. So why should we fear? <laughs> After a blessed 10 days in Singapore and bringing hope to thousands, Azu departed for the next part of his journey to Australia. The Australian Ahmadiyya community is one of the earliest international communities established outside of India. Hazrat Musa Hassan Khan Saab was the first Australian to enter the fold of Ahmadiyya in 1903. The community has grown since then, establishing centres across Australia and becoming an integral part of Australian society. The first Ahmadiyya mosque in Australia was set up in Sydney, called the Babel Huda Mosque, which was to serve as the headquarters for the community. <laughs> Unlike many international leaders, Azu spent many of his days in Australia personally meeting over 3,000 members of the community. Over the next month, Hazu would inaugurate two mosques in Australia, inspire thousands and reach out to millions. The arrival of Hazrat Khalifa al Masih in Australia was the perfect opportunity to hold one of the key events in the Ahmadiyya calendar, the National Annual Convention, otherwise known as the Jalsa Salana. The convention was to be attended by more than 4,000 members of the community from in and around Australia, and it was to last three days. During the three days, Hazul would address both men and women and remind them of their duties towards one another, their children and their faith, and how all should live their lives in a manner which portrays the best example for others. क्योंकि इجتماعی तौर पर रूहानी माहौल के दिन हैं इसलिए इन दिनों में खास तौर पर तलाश करके और यहां के प्रोग्रामों से फायदा उठाकर हमें एक हकीकी अहमदी बनने की कोशिश करने की जरूरत है Thousands of Ahmadiyya Muslims have been coming to this mosque in Western Sydney over the past few days to catch a glimpse of the man they believe to be the Muslim equivalent of the Pope. The arrival of Hazrat Khalifa al Masih in Australia brought considerable interest from local and national press and media. A few reporters had the opportunity to interview Hazrat Khalifa al Masih, including Bill Bertels from National Australian Broadcasting Corporation, who interviewed Hazur for ABC TV and radio for a special report delivered on national TV covering the Jolsa and Hazur's visit. I'd like to ask you some questions about the Muslim community over here, particularly here in Western Sydney. As you'd be aware, it's a very multicultural area. There's a, a fairly large Muslim community. Do you think there are particular challenges for Muslim communities living in Western societies, such as Australia? You see, if Muslims are practicing true Islam, then there should not be any challenge in absorbing, adjusting, and living in any of the society, whether it is Western or Eastern. In, 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 in a short sentence, we have uh, made a slogan of the teachings of Islam that is love for all and hatred for none. And if that message is there, and as I have already said, the the love of your country is part of your faith. Both these messages are such, or the slogans are such, that 
I don't feel that we have any problem in adjusting ourselves in any of the society. During his tour of Australia, Hazrat Khalifa al Masi also visited Melbourne, the first time for a Khalifa to visit the city. During his stay there, Hazu personally met members of the community, inaugurated the Ahmadiyya Centre, a complex that can accommodate more than 2,000 people, visited the local attractions and delivered a keynote address at a reception held in his honour. The key themes espoused by His Holiness and many of his addresses, those of religious tolerance, loyalty to country, rejection of extremism, rebellion, disorder commitment to community and the pursuance of peace, they resonate with the key values of the Australian military and all true Australians. I honour the sacrifices and risks you take to bring these messages to the world and thank you for your gracious visit to our country. Here I would like to point out that this golden principle given by the Quran is not only for Muslims but in fact it is a universal truth that in order to establish peace, justice must prevail. Unfortunately, when in the name of bringing peace, major powers interfere in the matters of other countries, they do not uphold the requirements of justice to the necessary degree or in minute detail. During a visit to the United States, I also addressed their senior politicians and policy makers. I clearly said to them that any act or policy they undertake to try and develop peace would never prove successful until all personal interests were set aside and until the requirements of justice were upheld in an entirely selfless manner. I loved it. I, was, I can see why he's a, a leader of world peace, because he said exactly what I wanted to hear. Um, and um, he touched on the countries and the problems of the world, and I can see why he um, is getting on with the heads of governments of other countries. And I wish all um, Islam leaders were like that, and we wouldn't have any trouble in the world. Uh, it was an absolute honour for me uh, to meet His Holiness. Uh, Truly, the, uh, the values that, uh, that the Ahmadi uh, culture actually preaches are, are very, very close to our own. Uh, the, uh, the love for all, hatred for none, is a fantastic message. Um, and it, it's, some, it's something that, uh, that the entire community should embrace. Well, I thought his speech was very challenging and I thought it was very important for us to be confronted with issues of the lack of justice in our world and the real importance of getting all people together to work together. There's not some people good, some people bad. We must always work together. I thought that was the message that I took out of what he was saying. It seems like after seeing His Holiness that there's been a, a, a special seed of, of peace uh, sown in Melbourne. On his return to Sydney, Hazrat Khalifa al Masih led the Eid al-Adha prayers, with over 2,000 people attending at Bad al-Huda Mosque, the second time for a Khalifa al Masih to lead Eid prayers from Sydney. The spiritual leader of the global Ahmadiyya community, Mirza Masrur Ahmad, is currently visiting Australia for the first time since 2006. Following Hazu's previous interviews by the press, radio and ABC News 24, ABC Asia Pacific Current Affairs program, Newsline, did a special five-minute interview with Hazza Khalifa al Masih, which was broadcast to the entire Asia-Pacific region, with viewership in the millions. In the interview, Hazu was questioned on his continued efforts of spreading the message of peace to many world leaders and the continued acts of violence and hatred perpetrated against the Ahmadiyya Muslim community in some parts of the world. As leader of the Ahmadiyya, you've spent a lot of time promoting interfaith dialogue with followers of other streams of Islam. Has your work been successful? We, we have been trying. And uh, as far as uh, interfaith dialogues are concerned, it is, uh, we are being widely accepted everywhere. And our motto, love for all and hatred for none, is liked everywhere. This is the true 
picture of Islam. Islam means peace and love and harmony, reconciliation. And that is the true message. Whenever we take this message, wherever we take this message, it is liked everywhere and it is working. Mirza Masru Ahmad, thank you very much for your time. A historic reception was held in the Centenary Khilafat Hall at Bad al-Huda Mosque in honor of Hazrat Khalifatul Masih, an event which was attended by more than 300 highly influential dignitaries, including members of the Senate and State, and federal government officials including party leaders, mayors, members of parliament, and police officials. Other guests included faith leaders, charities, and local neighbors. Prior to the event, Hazur officially inaugurated the Khilafat Centenary Hall. Before Hazur's keynote address, a number of dignitaries spoke. It is an absolute privilege to have you here, someone who preaches the need for peace, to have a leader, a religious leader, who is so well regarded by this community here, but right across the globe, who is prepared to stand up and talk about the necessities uh, for peace. Your Holiness, we need more leaders like you. We need more leaders of communities like this community who are prepared to stand up and speak the word of faith, and more importantly, speak the words of peace. Those amongst you have an influence on the major powers of the world, or who can convey this message to those who have access to the corridors of powers, should urgently fulfill their responsibilities. Do not consider the problems and conflicts of, today, uh, of today's world to be minor or insignificant. But instead, strive your utmost and make every possible effort to establish peace. Unfortunately, we hear and see right around the globe messages of war and terror and so forth. That is not uh, reflective or representative of Islam. Uh, this is representative and reflective of Islam. So I, I was delighted to be here. Uh, peace is Islam. And uh, he's carrying the message of Islam uh, to Australia in a way that no others have done. And it was, a, it was just a beautiful message to convey to the wider Australian society. It's absolutely magnificent to be able to hear the true message of Islam as distinct from sometimes the aberrations that are put out there. If anyone doubts it, I invite them to come to a meeting and listen to the genuine speech and feel the fellowship and the genuine love for each other that's here and they will go away changed. Soon after, Hazrat Khalifa al Masih visited the Ahmadiyya community in Brisbane and inaugurated Brisbane's first Ahmadiyya mosque, Bat al Masrur, capable of housing more than 2,000 people. A small reception was also held in celebration of the mosque opening, attended by local politicians and neighbours. Hazur also visited local attractions around Brisbane and Gold Coast. After nearly spending a month amongst the Australian Ahmadiyya Muslim community, Hazrat Khalifa al Masih departed for New Zealand. Upon arrival in New Zealand, Hazur was welcomed by community members who numbered near 400 in Auckland. But what was perhaps the main highlight of Hazu's tour of New Zealand was his historic invitation to the sacred meeting place Taranga Waiwai by the Maori king, Tahitia Paki. Never before had a religious leader been invited to such a meeting.
Hazur and his entourage were honored by Maori men, women, and children with the haka and seated at the head of the congregation, attended by the Maori king and queen, elders of Maori tribes, and members of the Ahmadiyya community of New Zealand. The meeting took place in the traditional Maori way, with an introduction and welcomed by the Maori elder, followed by traditional songs. The occasion also marked the completion of the translation of the Holy Quran in Maori language after an arduous 23 years of effort by Mr. Shaquille Manu. After an exchange of gifts, the Maori king and Hazrat Khalifa al Masih met personally while members of the two communities met in the traditional Maori way through Hongi. After the meeting, Hazrat Khalifa al Masih officially presented the king the Holy Quran with Maori translation. Ki te whakarewa i te puka puka tapu a te whakapono Muslim i roto i te reo Māori, a nei ngā whakamahuki. The meeting at the Māori was one of significant importance and interest. This was the first time a religious leader was invited to the Māori. The national media was there to cover the event, including Māori television, which did a special report on the event. Following the historic meeting with the Māori king, Hazrat Khalifa al Masih inaugurated New Zealand's annual convention, or Jalsa Salana, and New Zealand's first Ahmadiyya mosque, Badul Mukid, built next to the previous mission house. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community may have just 400 members, but it's the proud owner of the largest purpose built mosque in the country. Nicole Bremner reports. A crisp white and sparkling new, all this mosque needed was an official opening. Cue the arrival of Hadrat Mirza Mazrur Ahmad, global leader of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. The opening of the mosque was a key event in New Zealand, which brought considerable attention from media. TV New Zealand made a special report for their One News program and also interviewed Hazrat Khalifa al Masih, where Hazur said that everyone is welcome to the mosque for the worship of the One God, whatever religion they may be. Is it your hope that more people will come if it's open to everybody, that more New Zealanders will come? Yes, if, if they wish they can come, it's open for everybody. If, if they, they, are, they, they are praying to Allah, they, you saw all the religions came from, according to my belief, all religions came from the God, from Allah, right? So if all the religions are from Allah, then, and we are the creation of Allah, then how can we stop anybody to come and worship his creator? In the following days, Hazur also addressed the Lajna separately and after the concluding session of the Jalsa Salana, took bath from the newcomers into the community. A large reception dinner was also held at the mosque, attended by high-profile representatives from the government of New Zealand, academic circles, local neighbours and the Maori community including the Maori king and queen. Before his departure from New Zealand, Hazur attended another high-profile event, this time at the Parliament buildings in the capital, Wellington. Among the many guests attending were members of Parliament, foreign ambassadors, including ambassador for Israel, Iran, Britain and Cuba. Hazur delivered his keynote address, adding to his continued efforts of reaching out to world leaders, as he has done at the British Houses of Parliament, the U.S. Capitol Hill and the European Parliament. It is a requirement of loving one's nation that if it is ever attacked, it is the duty of a citizen to be ready to give every sacrifice for its defense and to liberate the nation. Nevertheless, if the conflict can be resolved in a cordial or peaceful way, through negotiations and diplomacy, then one should not needlessly invite death and killings. Hazu's last stop on his epic tour of the Far East was Japan. The majority of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community reside in the city of Nagoya, where Hazu spent most of his days. 
The highlight of Hazu's visit was the inauguration of a recently purchased building, which is to be converted into a large mosque for the Ahmadiyya community, which inshallah will make it the largest mosque of Japan. A large reception was also held in Nagoya, attended by more than 150 influential guests, some of whom spoke in great praise of the community in their humanitarian services during earthquakes and the recent tsunami, even outlining services of Chaudhry Zafullah Khan Saab towards Japan during his days in the United Nations. In 1951, when the Treaty of San Francisco was signed, Sir Zafullah Khan Saab delivered a speech. At the time, he was the foreign minister of Pakistan, a very devout member of the Ahmadiyya community. He said, We must establish peace in Japan with equality and justice, not with hatred and vengeance. In this manner, he safeguarded the Japanese stance. We must always keep in mind the spirit of Mr. Khan's speech. The need of the time is for us to step forward with a spirit of reconciliation because if we do not become true ambassadors of peace, a great calamity could easily befall the world. Hazu was also interviewed by a prolific national newspaper, the Asahi Sinbun. In the interview, Hazu spoke of the international Ahmadiyya Muslim community, his duties as the leader of tens of millions of followers, and the establishment of the Ahmadiyya city in Pakistan called Rabwa. In Tokyo, a Q&A session was held with a large number of ministers, members of parliament, journalists and corporate leaders. This gave many an opportunity to pose questions directly to Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih, where he demystified many aspects of Islam and laid out some of the most beautiful teachings of the Holy Quran. Shortly before the end of his trip, during his visit to the famous Sensuji temple in the heart of Tokyo, Hazur very quickly became the center of attention, where nearly all visiting wished to meet Hazur and have a picture taken with him. This was reflective of his whole tour of the Far East. Wherever he went, Hazur attracted the faithful and the rest of the world. An incredible and historic journey for some. But for Hazrat Khalifa al a small part of his many innumerable duties towards mankind. And it's not like there's a break in his work. Upon his return to the UK, Hazur addressed the Pan-African Ahmadiyya Association event, celebrating 50 years of independence of many African countries, attended by many members of the Ahmadiyya community of African origin, as well as representatives of many African governments from high commissions and embassies. In his keynote address, Hazur spoke of the need of African nations to put aside self-interest and to become united. If this belief is developed, that the loyalty we owe to our country and the success of our nation are our ultimate priorities above and beyond all other interests, then success will flow forth. Such attitudes will be the means of making your independence permanent and will open many future avenues of success and progress. It is my prayer that all, that they all realize that prioritizing their national interests above their personal interests are the golden keys that unlock the gates to permanent freedom and success. Perhaps the most anticipated event to be attended by Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih was the historic Conference of World Religions organized by the UK Ahmadiyya Muslim community at Guildhall in London. The event was themed around the existence of God in the 21st century and it was attended by representatives of major world religions as well as 500 other guests consisting of politicians, academics and NGOs. Hazur met some of the guests personally in brief meetings, many of whom addressed the congregation on their religious teachings, world peace and the existence of God. Among the guests were Geshi Tashi Sering, representing the Dalai Lama, Sheikh Muafak Tarif, head of the Druze community, Archbishop Kevin MacDonald, representing the Catholic Church, Rabbi Professor Daniel Sperber, representing the Chief Rabbi of Israel, Right Honorable Dominic Grieve MP, and Professor Kwaku Dan Subwafu, High Commissioner of Ghana, 
reading a message from the president of Ghana. Cardinal Jean-Louis Touran, who is Pope Francis's principal advisor on interfaith matters, visited several communities of other religions in this country. And in our dialogue, we focused on the theme of peace from different perspectives. What struck me most as I listened to the contributions from representatives of different religions was that consistently there was a clear connection between prayer and peace. Men and women become people of peace precisely through prayerful fidelity to the religious truth in which they believe. That is how it works. We can be peacemakers if we personally receive the gift of peace. The important thing is for all believers to put the teachings of their respective religious traditions into practice sincerely in their day-to-day -day lives. The highlight of the event was the keynote address by Hazrat Khalifa al -Masih. I hope and pray that we, who are the representatives of different faiths and religions and who have gathered here today to particularly demonstrate these loving teachings, all strive towards worshipping the one God by teaching, uh, by treating his creation with justice and by fulfilling their due rights. Certainly, these are the original teachings of all religions. We should utilize all of our resources and capabilities to foster a better society, to help God's creation, and to spread love, affection, and peace at every level. The urgent and critical need of the world today is to establish peace and faith in God. If the world, if the world understood this reality, then all countries, whether large or small, would not, in the name of defense spending, allocate millions and billions of dollars to expand their military capabilities. Rather, they would spend their wealth to feed the hungry, to provide universal education, and to improve the living standards of the developing world. I think it's not so many years ago that people thought faith had had its day and was, and was on the way out, so I think that's been proved to be decisively wrong. I thought it was fantastic. The idea that so many different religions can come together um, under one roof to discuss how we can enhance um, the faith and how we can get people to live together as one, get rid of all the, the, um, the problems in the world. The message of the Khalifa was a message of peace, understanding, Method that all the religion of the world have to speak to each other. We are all the descendants of Adam that was created by God, and therefore we are all brothers. And as brothers and cousins, we have to treat each other in such a way of understanding and peace, not to confront each other, not to have fight in the world, but to try to do as much as we can to work and pursue peace. As a continuously flourishing divine community under Khilafat, the various auxiliary organizations of the community often receive the blessing of direct guidance from Hazrat Amir al-Mu'mineen. One of these organizations is the International Association of Ahmadiyya Architects and Engineers, an international body of Ahmadiyya professionals who, as a charity, give up their personal time and wealth and are responsible for building model villages in different parts of Africa, as well as rehabilitating water pumps in some of the most remote regions and working with other charities to build schools, training centres, installing solar-powered street lighting and building mosques and Jamaat buildings around the world. The IAAAE receive their project missions and guidance directly from Hazrat Khalifa al Masih, and it's at events like the IAAAE Symposium this year where they get together and receive further guidance from Hazur. In such distant and remote areas, they have not just provided physical water to quench the thirst of the deprived people. They have not just provided physical water through which the local people can wash away the dirt from their bodies. They have not just illuminated darkened streets and darkened homes. Rather, from a spiritual perspective, they have also quenched the spiritual thirst 
of Ahmadis to see and hear the Khalifa work. Similarly, another international body working under Hazrat Khalifa al Masih is MTA International, who were also fortunate enough to be addressed by Hazrat Khalifa al Masih at the third international MTA conference, attended by representatives from more than 18 countries. Hazrat Khalifa al Masih is not only a voice for guidance, but a practical example. During the Khudam Ishtama UK, a three day event dedicated to the spiritual, mental, and physical development of the youth of the community, Hazur spent his time among the youth and on the final day took their pledge of allegiance to Khilafat, their loyalty towards their country, their affirmation of duty toward the community and mankind. After which he addressed the youth, and for the first time, the address was telecast live on MTA. Khudamul Hamdiya should always remember that successful nations and successful people are those who do not stand still, but who always try to move forward with firm conviction and who seek to continually improve and to spread far and wide. It has been 125 years, 125 years of witnessing divine miracles and help of God through the prophethood of the promised Messiah salam, and then a continuation of that blessing over 100 years through Khilafat. To celebrate and mark the occasion of 125 years since the founding of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community and under guidance from Hazur, a series of programs were broadcast in Arabic on MTA direct from the birthplace of Ahmadiyya, Gadiyan, in India. The series culminated on the final day, the 23rd of March, in a truly unique way, an address delivered by Hazrat Khalifa al Masih in Arabic. In the address, Hazur spoke to the Arab world directly. Assalamu alaikum ayyuhalat qiyaul asfiya min al Arab al Araba. Assalamu alaikum ya hala arzin nabuwate wajirana baitillahi luzma. Antum khaira umam al Islame wa khaira hizbillahi al ala. Maka ana likomin an yabluka shaanakum. Kadzitum sharafan wa maidan wa manzila. وَكَافِكُمْ مِنْ فَخْرٍ أَنَّ اللَّهَ إِفْتَتَحَا وَاهِيًا مِنْ آدَمَا وَخَتَمَا عَلَى نَبِيٍ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ وَمِنْ أَرْزِكُمْ وَطَنًا وَمَعَوًا وَمَوْلِدًا وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَنْ ذَلِكَ النَّبِيُّ مُحَمَّدٌ الْمُصْطَفَى سَيِّدُ الْأَسْفِيَاءِ فَخْرُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ وَخَاتِمُ الرُّسُلِ وَإِمَامُ الْوَرَاءِ قَدْ ثَبَتَ إِحْسَانُهُ عَلَى كُلِّ مَنْ دَبَّا عَلَى رِجْلَيْنِ وَمَشَى وَقَدْ أَدْرَكَ وَحَيَهُ كُلَّ فَآيَةٍ مِنْ رَمُوزٍ وَمَعَانٍ وَنِكَاتٍ وَلَا وَحَيَا دِينَهُ كُلَّ مَا كَانَ مَيْتًا مِنْ وَعَارِفِ الْحَقِّ وَسُنَنِ الْخُدَى أَلَّهُمَّ فَصَلِّ وَسَلِّمْ وَبَارِكَ لَيْهِ فِعَدَدِ كُلِّ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ الْقَتَرَاتِ وَالزَّرَّاتِ وَالْأَحْيَاءِ وَبِعَدَدِ كُلِّ مَا زَهَرَا وَاخْتَفَا وَبَلِّغْهُ مِنَّا سَلَامًا يَمْلَعُ أَرْجَاءَ السَّمَاءَ تُوبَا لِقَوْمٍ يَحْمِلُوا نِيرَ مُحَمَّدْ صلى الله عليه وسلم على رقبتِ وَتُوبَا لِقَلْبٍ أَفْزَى إِلَيْهِ وَخَالَتَهُ وَفِي حُبِّهِ فَنَا الحمد لله الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله أولا وآخرا وفي كل حين Following this, again under Hazu's guidance, another four-day broadcast was made, this time at the occasion marking the Khilafat Day, where again on the final day of broadcast, Hazur addressed the Arab world, this time from MTA Studios. Hazur spent a considerable length of time in the studio, giving his message and even conversing with live phone callers from around the world. <laughs> اسلام کے پہلے دور میں اپنا کردار ادا کیا تھا اب اسلام کی حقیقی تصویر دنیا کو دکھانے کے لیے نشت ثانیہ میں بھی اسلام کی نشت ثانیہ میں بھی اپنا کردار ادا کریں اللہ تعالیٰ آپ کو اس کی توفیق عطا فرمائے بس آج دنیا میں پھیلے ہوئے تمام عرب احمدی اپنی ذمہ داری سمجھیں کہ آپ نے اپنے اس فرض کو پہلے سے بڑھ کر ادا کرنے کی کوشش کرنی ہے 
रहबर के लिए दोस्तों रस्ते को सजा दो और दीदा वो दिल फरशे In the previous year, Hazu's only other tour of a country was his tour of Germany, which included the famous Jalsa Salana of Germany. In the two-week tour which included opening and foundation stone laying for mosques around Germany, Hazu addressed the Jalsa gathering on all three days. Hazu's addresses included the Friday Sermon of Jalsa, addressed to Lajna members, addressed to non-Ahmadi guests attending the Jalsa. This is, in fact, speaking out in favor of justice. This is, in fact, speaking out in an effort to remove all grievances and bitterness from the world. This is, in fact, a means of bringing people together and forming an atmosphere of mutual harmony. The true teachings of Islam that we have learned from the Quran and from the practices of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Wasallam teach us to never act cruelly and to always fulfill the rights of mankind. An address on the last day of the Jalsa. <laughs> and the bath ceremony. Ashado. Ashado. Allah ilaha. Allah ilaha. Illa Allah. Illa Allah. Wahdahu. Wahdahu. La sharika lahu. La sharika lahu. Washado, Washado, Anna Mohammedan, Anna Mohammedan, Abduhu, Abduhu, Warasulu, Warasulu. Ik khab hai, or mustakil hai, ik khab hai. Like we said, this is only a small glimpse into just some of the public activities of Hazrat Khalifa Tulsi in the past year. Some of his other addresses included the address for Jalsa Salana Qadiyan from the UK, Pakistan or other countries in Pakistan, which are the crimes and the crimes, will, inshallah, fall in the air. Our job is to protect our God's work, to protect our God's work, and to never leave 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 our God's work. The Convocation Ceremony of Jamia Ahmadiyya UK and an address at a spiritual training camp for Ahmadi youth in the UK known as the Tirbiyati class. Zu also delivered special dars, or commentary of the last chapters of the Holy Quran, delivered live on the last day of Ramadan, as well as an Eid sermon the next day. During the year, Hazu inaugurated many mosques and laid the foundation stones for some around the world, among which were the inauguration of Nur Mosque in Crawley, UK, and the inauguration of Nasser Mosque in Gillingham, UK. This mosque will not be one that proves to be a cause of concern or fear for the local people, but rather this mosque will prove to be one filled with people who will always be ready to serve and help all of you. This mosque will be a beacon of light that illuminates its surroundings 
and be known as a symbol of peace, harmony and justice for all. In Germany, Hazur inaugurated the Darul Aman Mosque in Friedberg, the Al Mahdi Mosque in Munich, the foundation stone laying for Mubarak Mosque in Wiesbaden, and the foundation stone laying for Sadiq Mosque in Karben. At each event, Hazur addressed the local Ahmadiyya community on their duties and responsibilities towards their creator, their mosque, and their local neighboring community. All events were attended by local mayors, MPs, and other high profile guests. <laughs> मुकामी लोगों के साथ मिलजुल कर रहें मुल्क की तरक्की के लिए काम करें शहर की तरक्की के लिए काम करें लोगों की भलाई और बेहतरी के लिए काम करें अमन और मोहब्बत और प्यार पैदा करने के लिए काम करें तो इससे बढ़कर इंटीग्रेशन और क्या हो सकती है और यही मकसद है इंसानों के आपस में रहने का इन हिज कंटिन्यूड परस्यूट ऑफ डेवलपिंग कॉन्शियस रिस्पांसिबल एंड केयरिंग यूथ हजूर हेल्ड मोर देन 40 क्लासेस विद वक्फन और खुदाम एंड लजना as well as university and college students around the world guiding them on various matters and receiving updates from them on their future plans and education every single friday we were fortunate to receive a fountain of blessings through the live friday sermons by hazrat khalifa tul masi no matter where he was among the various interviews and news coverage of hazrat khalifa tul masi especially during current world events was a special report by british broadcaster itv and BBC Radio Asia Network and World Service both covering stories on the current state of Muslims and the concept of khilafat in Islam wada-e haq jaan e millat ae amirul How fortunate are Ahmadi Muslims around the world that in any situation in times of happiness or distress in their homelands or through their TV sets a man has been designated by God to look after them a man they hold dearer than all loved possessions a man who clearly loves them back with complete devotion this is Islam in its pristine purity khilafat that loves all khilafat that hates none to listen to a leader who walks the world stage talking about the importance of tolerance of faith and peace uh, we need more leaders like that now on the world stage what his holiness spoke about as far as syria is concerned uh, is of world importance and fortunately there's someone like him to say it to world leaders to politicians to get their attention because someone has to get their attention he lives it it's inspiration a person of true leadership i only saw him for a few minutes but i was instantly impressed as i say by the sort of the genuineness of the charm that he radiates labbaik murshidi If you want to catch any of the featured programs of Hazrat Khalifa Tul Masi as well as others from past years simply go to ondemand.mta.tv on your smartphone tablet or PC and gain access to a wealth of archives